It's time to do some maths. Hello everybody and welcome back to the StudyTube Project channel. My name is Harry Surplus and it is a pleasure to be on the channel today. If you don't know who I am, I am 17 years old and I'm a maths and theatre student. I am currently in year 13. Now I say that with some slight hesitation because with the world pandemic going on at the minute, Am I really in year 13? Who knows? Now I'm here today on the channel to give you a very small little maths lesson on imaginary and complex numbers. Let's jump in to the maths. Now I'm going to take the maths right back to the beginning and we're going to start by looking at square numbers. Now square numbers are created when you multiply two integers by itself. So for example, if we multiply one by itself, that's one times one, that gives us one. So that means one is a square number. Then let's move on to the next integer. Integer being whole number, we'll have a look at two. Two times two is four. So that means four is a square number and so on. Three times three is nine. So that means nine is a square number. Four times four is 16. So that means 16 is a square number. And five times five is 25. Now I'm going to stop at five because if I didn't stop at five, I would be here uh, forever. So I think it's sensible and reasonable that we stop at five. Now here what we've done is we've done one times one, two times two, three times three, etc, etc. And another way of writing one times one is one squared. And one squared we just write one with a little two above it. And then two times two is then two squared. Three times three is three squared. Four times four is four squared. And five times five is five squared. I'm just letting you know that because as the maths goes on, I might use that abbreviation for doing one times one, two times two, etc. So I'm going to write all the numbers that are highlighted here in a row because those are our first five square numbers. So we've got one, four, nine, 16 and 25. So to summarise, square numbers are created by multiplying an integer by itself. Now, just like when we add numbers together, we can do the inverse of that, which is to subtract numbers. And the inverse just means to undo something. So for example, if we divide, the inverse of dividing is multiplying. So because we've got an inverse for multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting, somewhere in the world of maths, we must have an inverse for squaring and it's called square rooting. The notation for square rooting is that. I don't really know how to explain that. We can just see that that's what it looks like. So the inverse, which means to undo of squaring is square rooting. So let's try that out with a few numbers. For example, if we want to work out the square root of four, well, what we need to think is what number is multiplied by itself. So what number do we square to give four? And we know that that's two. So the square root of four must be two. If we were to do the square root of, let's say 16, we're trying to find the number that multiplies by itself to give 16. And we know that that's four because four times four is 16. So the square root of 16 is four. Let's have a go at the square root of 100. Again, we need to think what number is squared to give 100? Well, that's 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. Now what we've just done there is square rooted square numbers. But what happens if we square root, let's say 13? Because 13 isn't a square number. Well, let's try it. Square root of 13. If you've got a calculator or you know where a calculator is, go and get your calculator. If you've not got a calculator, I'll do the work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the square root of 13 on the calculator. So square root, and then 13. And when you press equals on your calculator, it just gives you the square root of 13. So it's not really that useful when you put it in your calculator. Now, the reason your calculator does that is because the square root of 13 is an irrational number. Stop, we need a definition. An irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a fraction. So root 13 cannot be simplified any further. It can't be written as a fraction. So therefore it's irrational. 
If we were to press S to D on our calculator, which means to convert that number into a decimal, we can see that the calculator gives us 3.6055 and that carries on. So root 13 is 3.6055. Five, one, and that carries on. And in fact, those decimal places will carry on forever. Now, from looking at the two ways we can write root 13, I think that you'll agree with me, writing it root 13 is much better than writing it as the decimal equivalent. Now I'm going to introduce a new word. If you've never heard of this word before, then it's new. I'm going to introduce the word CERD, spelt S-U-R-D. And the definition of a CERD is a number in root form and it can't be simplified any further. Now root 13 is just root 13, we can't simplify that any further, so root 13 is a cert. So to summarise, a square number is found by multiplying a number by itself. The inverse of squaring a number is square rooting. When square rooting a square number, your answer will be an integer, and an integer is a whole number. And when you square root a non-square number, your answer will be a decimal. So we have tried square rooting square numbers, and we've tried square rooting non-square numbers. What about if we square root negative numbers? Let's take, for example, negative one. Now remember, when we're square rooting, we're trying to find the number that multiplies by itself to give the number under the square root. So what I'm trying to find here is what two numbers multiply together to give minus one. Well, I don't really need to do that thinking here because I've got this device, it's a calculator. So what I'm gonna do is in my calculator, I'm going to put in the square root of minus one. Now, when I do that, my calculator says non-real error. Your calculator might say math error, but it doesn't matter what it says because we've got an error. So does that mean maths is broken? Does that mean we all leave maths and we can't find anything else about maths? No. Because my calculator says non-real error, I'm going to try and do it myself because my calculator might not be able to do it. So let's try and find a number that multiplies by itself to give minus one. I'm gonna put a box and another box equals minus one. So I'm just gonna try one. One times one, of course, equals one. So it doesn't equal minus one. Let's try minus one times minus one. Does that equal minus one? Well, no, because a minus times a minus is a plus, and one times one is one. So minus one times minus one is one. So not minus one. You could try many other numbers as well, but I'm gonna save time and tell you that there isn't a number that when you multiply by itself gives minus Minus one. So what do we do? We make up a number and the number that we make up is i. The square root of minus one is equal to i. Yes, this is getting confusing, so let's take another break. Has everybody refreshed a little bit? I hope that you have. So in maths, we call the square root of minus one i. So what that means is i times i is equal to minus one. And that is what an imaginary number is. And in fact, there are infinitely many imaginary numbers because an imaginary number is in the form a i, where a is a real number. And what I mean by a real number is one, two, three, four, minus 64, minus 92, minus a half, a half, um, any number like that, it can be a fraction, it can be positive or negative, is a real number. So some examples of imaginary numbers are 7i, 5i, 17 over 9i, minus 63i, and 7.5i. Those are some examples. Now remember that the i means the square root of minus one. So what 7i actually means is seven times the square root of minus one. And what minus 63i actually means is minus 63 
than the square root of minus one. Now I'm sure you're thinking, what is the point in all this? Because the title says imaginary, they're not real. There isn't a real value for the square root of minus one. But imaginary numbers come into maths in a whole bunch of topics. They come in quadratics, they come under advanced calculus, and surprisingly, they're used in many real life situations. One example being in electricity. But that's not where it stops. Imaginary numbers can be added to real numbers to make complex numbers. Now, yes, they say they're complex, but I'm only going to introduce you to a little bit of them. Let's say we have four and we add to that the square root of minus one, so i. That is a complex number. Now, why is it a complex number? Because like I just said, it's got four and we're adding an imaginary number to it. We could also subtract an imaginary number, so we could have 32 minus 16i, and that is a complex number. So, a complex number is in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. And that's it. Of course, it goes on much further, and we can look at these in much more detail about where they come in mathematics and how we can find them in mathematics. But what we've done is we've gone from base six square numbers all the way to numbers that aren't actually real. I really, really do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it quite interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. You can head over to my channel as well. Hopefully it will be left in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay at home, and you never know, I might see you again on this channel. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye!